So how difficult is it to change your PhD and do a completely different one after you've completed all of your research? And I want to answer that today. I think that's an important question. And, you know, the simple answer is that it's relatively easy, but the longer answer, it's not easy at all. So if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Masak. I'm an Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people that help me out that I want to pay the favor for to help you out. Okay, so... Um, what can you actually do here? So you might be, you might have completed your PhD. It might take you, you know, if you're really quick, it might take you four years, right, to actually get this thing done. And then you decided to go into something completely different because you've learned something. You realize that your field is not the uh, most lucrative field. There's lots of fields like that. And you want to switch to go do something different. Um, it happens all the time. Uh, there are a lot of people that actually do this, but here's the thing, right? You only have so much life to live. And so dedicating yourself for another five years or longer towards something to do a good job is really difficult to actually do. So we see that, I, I see that actually a fair bit in the business field because people realize that after they've been doing their PhD for a long time in another field, they realize, wait a minute, I could do the same thing in a business school and 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 you know get paid a substantial amount more. And it's the same stuff, right? Like that's it. And knowledge is knowledge, but you're just teaching to a different crowd. Your 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 audience is different, but it's often very much similar. And so you see a lot of people going from a, a certain area to business or, you know, maybe sometimes they might go into law or something like that, that is more lucrative. And this course of action is very, very normal to go through this. It's not that, you know, it's not easy in the sense that you have to actually build your track record all over again. We actually see a lot of people go from a as a scientist, like a chemist, for example. My background is actually chemical engineering, so I completely understand. Um, so, you know, like as a chemist or a biologist or something like that, and like a full-fledged scientist and make that transition. And if you do this correctly, you can actually have a very, very lucrative career and do fantastic with it. But here's the thing, you have to do it correctly and you have to do it um, dedicated in the sense that you are really going to do some really wonderful things. And so it makes it better if you have a strong background, you're already doing really well and you're successful, and then you decide to go into another field and then that way you can actually leverage some of this understanding in this other field. What you see sometimes is that, so for example, you, you, you're you doing pretty well as a chemist and you want to transition out of it. Well, then what you can do is look at, hey, I want to go into, you know, I want to become a, a business professor and I want to do that at the best, best schools. And so you know at this moment that there's this kind of pecking order that happens, so you only apply to the best schools to get into a PhD program at, you know, the best schools. That happens all the time, and that is completely normal. Um, I don't think that anybody would say that that is a bad idea in any sort of sense. Everybody understands why you're doing that, is that the market is just a lot more lucrative to actually do that. You might be talking to a different audience. So, for example, the chemist example. Um, those people will study, you know, how scientists behave in a lab. I, um, there's a lot of people that actually do that. Uh, um, there are, you know, my master supervisor, for example, was in economic geography and did a PhD in that, but then switched into marketing after and did another PhD in that. Um, and the reason is, is that you realize like, hey, I'm studying, I, I believe he was studying venture capitalists at the time in terms of economic geography. And it was the same thing, right? Like, and then you go in and you realize that, hey, there's a whole bunch of us that actually study that using economic geography lens. Um, 
you know, that was really hot about 10 years ago and it was kind of died off a little bit more, but you know, it was very hot at that moment. There's still lots of people doing that. There's lots of sociologists that have done this and gone into a business field. Um, this kind of stuff is really uh, very smart to do because you look at, hey, wait a minute, I can actually do a little better and I mean a lot better to be honest, right? Um, and you can go into these fields and do really well. The thing is that you are unlikely to, unless you go into a business program right at the get-go, you're unlikely to do a PhD in that right at the get-go because you think like that is not something I'm interested in. Those people don't do anything interesting. Um, the same with engineering, right? You might be thinking like, um, those engineering folks, what do they know? Everything is boring in there, but you realize that they do a whole bunch of human factor stuff. They do, um, you know, industrial engineering is sometimes really fascinating. You know, there's a lot that you actually learn um, that you realize my doggy is licking, having a drink right now. But you know, there's lots of stuff that you learn along the way that you're like, wait, I'm doing the same thing. Right? or a, a philosophy PhD, for example. There's there's people that do that. There's there's somebody I know right now that is doing a, another um, PhD after doing a philosophy PhD. And, um, you know, this is super, super common. It's not what you think it would be. And the reason is that you're making this transition because you recognize that, hey, I could do a lot better in this other field. But here's the thing. Um, it is not easy, right? In the sense that I just have to be like, oh, I'm gonna switch and, and everything's gonna be hunky-dory. No, I mean, it's grinding work, right? And as long as you know, so those people that have done a PhD before realize it's grinding work and it does not change whatever field that you're going in. It's grinding work. If you switch to something else, it's always hard. It's always difficult. Nobody likes to do it. Um, and you just gotta put in that work. And so here's the thing is that the people that are thinking about doing that, they are going into it knowingly and they're usually a lot more dedicated. They usually understand like, hey, this is going to be a journey and I'm okay with that, right? So it just means putting out another five more years, another 10 more years or whatever this, this, this time is of living below the poverty line and being okay with that. So if you did, for example, um, a, PhD in, in chemistry and you have, you want to go work for industry, well, that's going to hurt. But you know, if you do a PhD in, in um, philosophy and you're already not making as much as you were hoping, I'm um, going and doing a PhD in, in another field that's more lucrative is completely fine. That's, I mean, that, that is, that is one really rational reason why people actually do these things. But sometimes you choose something else. Um, or sometimes, you know, you don't do that. You just kind of navigate towards that thing that you're interested in. You kind of bleed towards that over time. So I might be interested in, um, you know, I might be interested in, in chemistry, for example, right? I did my PhD in, in strategy, but I'm interested in chemistry. I mean, you can bleed over to that and start navigating and working with people that are in chemistry. It just takes a lot longer and um, you're not likely to have that base so there's some things that you're going to be missing, but it's possible to actually do those kind of things. I mean, what I'm saying is everything's possible and you just have to be dedicated to actually get there. That's it. All right. Take care and have a wonderful day.